Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is good to see you all this morning. It's brisk this morning, isn't it? <laughs> welcome. Welcome, welcome. We have a couple of announcements. We'll wait for... Good job, Savannah. You might want to push it up a little further. There you go. Too <laughs> far. Now I'll try to give it a shot. There you go. you got to get under it. There you go. Good job. Thank you. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. We have some announcements this morning. Movie night and the community center, there's a flyer in the, uh, in the bulletin this morning about that. So take advantage of all those fun things going on at the community center. There's a craft day today here at the church from 12 to 3 to make stuff to donate to the country store on November the 2nd. Some of you made donations for that. And then just through a course of all kinds of things that happened, we didn't have it. So it's happening hopefully today. And then the smorgasbord and country store on November 2nd, there is a flyer for that in your bulletin as well. And then if you did not know this, Dana, our postmaster, lost her mom uh, last week. Peggy Steinke passed away. The services are at Burkhart Funeral Home in Crawfordsville on Saturday, November the 2nd. Visitations from 2 to 4, and the funeral is at 4 for any of you who might be interested in um, going to that and supporting Dana and her family. Are there other announcements this morning to be made? Choir, thank you. Yes, the last choir. I'm like, somewhere in the distance, I've heard a noise. <laughs> the last one, last Wednesday, I thought went really well. Debbie, just she is a taskmaster, but she is doing a good job with us. And she was getting some sound for us, from us, so it was good. Um, so this week, Wednesday, 630 to 8, uh, be here. That's right. So, yep. Yeah. All right, anything else? Daryl. And also, I want to put a plug in about our movie uh, next Friday night, November 1st. We always try to do it the first Friday of the month if we can. It's called A Thanksgiving Thomas. It has uh, Bo Bridges and Jeff Bridges. It's a grandfather, a father, and a son in the movie. And in real life, they're grandfather father and son. And it's a movie that you won't forget. And it's one for the whole family. It's one of my favorites. So hopefully you can make it Friday night. Friday night, movie night. Yes. Make it a date. Yes. Date night. And That'll go be fun. Your presents, but I hope it'll be good. What time? <laughs> what time, dear? What time does it say on the. I think it's. <coughs> what time does it say on the sheet? Seven. Doors open at 6.30. 6.30. Doors open at 6.30. And you can, the movie starts at 7. All right. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Any other announcements? Then Debbie, lead us into worship with the prelude, please.
Thank you, Debbie. And again. <laughs> What a beautiful day it was this morning. I, I, just, I got to drive in the back way today because the highway's closed, you know, and the, the eastern sun was coming up and uh, it's coming by the Iron Bridge. And the sun was just shining in all the maple trees and just the, the, the crops were out of the fields and the Angus cattle were out. And it's just a beautiful scene and just made me appreciate a moment of, you know, I'm blessed. It's amazing we live where we live and we're just blessed to live in this country and in Putnam County in Russellville. Okay. But I just wanted to take this time to share with you. Stand up with you, with me, if you will, and take this time to call to worship and join me on the screen. Sisters and brothers, arise. Arise and lift your hearts. Arise and lift your eyes. And arise and lift your voices. The living God, the living and living Spirit of God has called us together in witness and celebration and struggle. Reach out toward each other, for our God reaches out towards us. Let us worship God. Join me in the hymn of 502, In My Heart Rings a Melody, verses 1 and 3. loving kindness that never fails us. We thank you for those with us that you may guide our thoughts and actions to bring you glory. We give thanks to you for another beautiful day and for our church family. As we conduct our day, you are forever in our hearts and thoughts. We ask for your love and guidance and protection in everything we do. Amen. The deacons come forward. As Jesus taught us, we should not store up our treasures on earth, but in heaven, and in Matthew 6, it says this, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves the treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break or steal. So today we give with open hearts, knowing that our true treasure is found in you. With open hearts, we offer these gifts to support your work and to build your kingdom here on earth. May they be multiplied according to your will. Amen.
That was terrible. Good morning. Good morning. There you go. That's better. You guys had to wake up a little bit this morning, didn't you? So Miss Susie and her family are at a wedding in Michigan, I think. And so she left this book for us to read together called The Pumpkin Gospel. What's happening this week? What's coming up? Halloween. Halloween. Are you so excited? Are you dressing up? Yeah. Are you? Are you going to go trick-or-treating? Nope. You're not going to no, trick or treat. I'm, I'm handing out. You're handing out candy. Good for you. Are you going to eat some of it before yeah. in between? Yeah. My sister, my sister hunts and I eat it. You? Oh, your sister <laughs> hunts and you eat. I, it sounds like a it sounds like a good plan if you can get the you know get it done. That's awesome. All right. This is called the Pumpkin Gospel, and I think this is going to be fun. Pumpkins for sale. My big round pumpkin shows me God gives us a clean heart. He will forgive our mess-ups. He offers a brand new start. Psalm 51, 7 says, Wash me until I am clean, whiter than snow. The slime that fills the pumpkin, all stringy, slippery goo, reminds me of my insides before God makes me new. Romans 6, 18 says, Now you are set free from sin. Anybody ever clean out the inside of a pumpkin? Yeah, it's disgusting. Kind of squishy. It's disgusting. It's kind of gross, isn't it? <laughs> I scoop the mushy gushies like God cleans out my sin. When he says, I forgive you, I smile a great big grin. Our God, you bless everyone whose sins you forgive and wipe away. Psalm 32, 1. How many of you eat pumpkin seeds? Have you ever cooked them? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're good. Aren't they? Put a little butter and salt on them. You do? You do? Well, that's exciting. Come look into my pumpkin, he's all clean inside. And outside he's wearing a smile that's big and wide. Shout praises to the Lord. Psalm 149, verse 1. God's love is like a candle that shines from inside out. It's beaming deep within me, and so I now can shout. You are the light of the whole world. Matthew 5, 15. Did you know that? That Jesus made you a light to the world? What do you think that means? What does it mean to be a light to the world? Does it mean to share God's love with other people? Yes. yes, absolutely. You get to do that. So do we. We all get to do that. To glow like my big pumpkin and have a nice, clean heart, ask God to please forgive you. You'll have a brand new start. Ephesians 5, 8, and 9 says, Act like people of the light and let your light shine. So you guys, be careful when you're trick-or-treating or passing out candy. Don't eat too much. You'll get a stomach ache. <laughs> and let your light shine as you go out into the world this week. Okay? All right, let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you and we praise you for these children and for their families. We pray for their safety during this fun time this week as they trick-or-treat and um, as they have some fun together. Lord, we just thank you and ask that you would help us to let our light shine. Let the love of Jesus shine through us to others. And watch over Susie and her family and bring them back safely to us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all go down the hall, and Miss Linda has a lesson for you today. So we have some prayer concerns to share this morning, one being that Mike uh, Simpson is in the hospital. He went in Friday. 
And so please keep Mike and Vaughn and their families in your prayers uh, this week. And then also found out that Cody Oliver fell, you know, they're building a house, and he fell a great distance, apparently broke his heel, broke his foot. Thank God he didn't break his back because he fell when he was working on the house. But that's uh, going to be on a screeching hold for a while because of um, the injuries that he sustained and while he's healing. So please keep Cody Oliver in your prayers uh, as well. Any other joys and concerns to share today? Yes. Um, well, I had four college students come in this weekend, well, Friday and yesterday. And the one girl I had asked for prayer was there. Oh, good. And I was, this was really a good time because we were talking and the girls <coughs> were testifying. Oh, wow. And I mean, that didn't be. That this grandma, I said, I'm grandma to all of you. And they said, yes, you are. And so I was really pleased. That is awesome. It touched my heart. That, yes, absolutely. Thank you. So, uh, you remember the last week uh, we asked prayer for her granddaughter's best friend who had tried to commit suicide. So, she is doing so much better, it sounds like, and is so thankful that she did not succeed in that. That's good news. Thank you for sharing that. Daryl. Yes, I have one more thing. It seems like we've got a lot going on in the community center. The mural is finished. They finished it yesterday. Okay. And um, if you'd like to go down and see it, it's uh, it's different. But I, <laughs> but I think you'll like it. All right. That is a joy. It is. Yes, Chris. Um, I have a friend who's 35 years that's in the hospital and not doing well. I'd like to have prayers for her. Her name's Jane Paris. We're Jane Paris, and she's not doing very well. Thank you, Chris. How's Marilyn, Harold? Good. Marilyn had to have a pacemaker replaced this week, so we're glad that she's okay and home and doing okay. Any others today? Yes, Gail. I have a former sister-in-law by my first marriage that uh, was put on hospice this week and uh, given her morphine for uh, comfort due to her cancer. Okay. <clears throat> for prayer by singing the song Sanctuary. It's found on page 655 in your hymnal or you can follow along on the screen. God, we are grateful for your presence with us here today, for you coming to our presence and into our midst here as we gather for praise and worship, Lord, to study your word. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to guide and lead us as we work together as a family of faith. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to 
reach out beyond our walls to others in our community and help us, Lord, to share your love with them. Help us to share good news and a, a welcoming spirit to all who will come into this place. Lord, we ask that you would continue to uh, bless those who are mending, those who are healing. And Lord, we just ask that you would comfort those who continue to struggle in their health issues. Lord, we know that there are those who are praying for answers to unknown problems going on in their lives. And we just ask that you would bring those answers, Lord, and help bring some healing into their lives, into their bodies. Lord, we pray for Mike and Vaughn and ask that you would give them your peace and your comfort as they go through this difficult time with Mike's health. We ask, Lord, that the doctors and nurses will bring comfort to him and, and that there will be some healing for him. And Lord, we pray for Cody Oliver as he recovers from a bad fall. We're just so grateful, Lord, that it wasn't worse than it was. We ask, Lord, that you'd bring healing to his body. And Lord, that they will uh, feel your peace as their house is, is uh, delayed at this point because of his uh, injuries. We just pray, Lord, that you give them a sense of your peace and your, your comfort. And Lord, we just thank you that Linda experienced uh, the joy of answered prayer with her young friends and uh, granddaughter's friend as they gathered in her home and testified to your goodness, Lord. And Lord, we just ask that you would um, continue to be with uh, Daryl and all of those who serve and work together. Uh, at the community center, we're grateful for the joys that the murals complete and for all the good things that are going on there in this community. And Lord, we pray for Chris's friend, Jane Paris, and ask that you would help her. Lord, she's just um, in, uh, not in good health. And we pray, Lord, that you would minister to her need and bring comfort to her and her friends and family. And Lord, we're just grateful that Marilyn is doing well. We thank you for her and and for, Tom, uh, for their, uh, their ministry together as a couple here in this church, or we're grateful for all that they bring to us. And Lord, for Gail's former sister-in-law in hospice care, we ask, Lord, that, her, her, that she'll be at peace, and Lord, that when it is her time to pass, that she will pass peacefully and that you will help her to feel your presence and your comfort to her family. Lord, we're grateful for all of these prayers. We're grateful for all the ways you minister to us in our need. And we ask, Lord, that you would hear our hearts as uh, unspoken concerns are being lifted to you this morning. And Lord, we ask that you would pray, uh, hear us as together we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Revelation. We're going to look at chapter 21, verses 4 through 11 today, together today. So all the way toward the end there of the book of Revelation. Verses 4 through 11 of chapter 21. Hear the word of the Lord. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, 
I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word this morning. <clears throat> when I was a little kid, I dealt a lot with homesickness. If I was away from home or away from my parents for very long, I would get really homesick, even to the point of like making myself physically ill so that my mom and dad would have to come and get me uh, from a friend's house or from my grandparents' house or wherever it happened to be that I was. And I would get really, really homesick because I felt very grounded, very safe, and very much where I belonged when I was at home. And when I was especially at home with my mom and dad. So when my dad passed away, it was a really difficult time because he was very much a part of that feeling of being safe and, and being uh, cared for and having that identity of who I was. It was like an identity crisis, you know, when you lose a parent. It's sort of like you, you have to reshape who, who you are because you're, you're so uh, much a part of who they are. And But I still had my mom, you know, and so I could still go home. And as long as I could go to my home and go back where I was feeling that, that groundedness, it was okay. Well, then when I lost my mom, you know, there was just that whole orphan feeling, just like that there was no place of belonging, um, and there was that homesick feeling, and it lasted a long time. And it was really a difficult thing for me to, to go through all of that. And, um, it was, but it was a growing process as well, because I came to understand you know, that my true home and my true identity and my true centeredness and my true belonging come from God. And that God is the one who created me and the one who gives me my identity and my, my belonging. He's the one who gives me, you know, that centeredness that I long for. He's my true home. And so heaven is our true home. And God has gone to prepare a place for us there. And so as we've been studying this, as we've been talking about heaven, it's really been a, an interesting thing for me to see how that is coming alive in me, that's growing in me, that, that desire to know more and to learn more about heaven and, and that it, there's that comforted feeling, I think, that, that comes with knowing more about. And I hope that that's kind of what you all are getting out of this as well as, as we've been talking about heaven, that there's a peace in it, that there's a comfort in it, that, that it's not so far away and that, that this is really a centeredness to who we are as the people of God, awaiting that opportunity to be with him um, in heaven. And so this week, we're talking about <clears throat> what it's going to be like, what heaven is going to be like, and um, what, what is our home in heaven really going to look like. And I, I don't know that we can ever really know exactly what that is. We can speculate for sure all day long about what we think that will be like, what it will look like, how we're going to act, what we'll see, what we'll do, whether or not our favorite pet will be there. Uh, but some of those questions I think will remain a mystery. And we've said that all along. Those things, there are some things that are just going to remain a mystery until we get there. Kind of like when you go on vacation someplace you've never been before. You know, you can look up pictures online. You can uh, read about it. You can do all of the research about it. 
but you won't know what it's like until you really get there. And then it's usually way more awesome than what you thought it was going to be. And you get the full grasp of it when you actually arrive. So we learned uh, from reading this passage in Revelation 21 and then on into chapter 22 that the new heaven and the new earth will merge, that God is going to bring that all about and that that will come together at the end. And Paul said it this way. He said, our faith will become sight. And what he meant by that is, in, in other words, is that humanity, what we've been longing for, what we've been searching for in faith, we will actually see and we'll actually participate in it, that we'll actually inherit it and it will become a reality. It's what we've been longing for since the ascension of Christ into heaven after his resurrection and it will become reality. And that reality, according to our author, Chip Ingram, includes two things, the following, as he, as he sees it. The first thing he says is, heaven will be a lot like the new me. And so he unpacks that a little bit. He says, we've talked about receiving a glorified body. That body will be a lot like that resurrected body of Jesus. It will not grow old. It will not become diseased, and it will never die again. John, in 1 John 3, 2, says this, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But what we know, that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Paul says it this way, in 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 44 through 49, he says, We are sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, then there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, a life-giving spirit. So he's talking about Adam, the first human being created. He's talking about Jesus, who gave us eternal life. So he goes on, the spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have been born the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. So that's, that says it's a lot, and it's kind of complicated to understand a little bit. So our author goes on and kind of unearths that a little bit for us. He says that our bodies that we have are natural and of this earth, but the glorified body that we will receive after Jesus comes and snatches us up, he says that our glorified bodies will be spiritual and of heaven. That's what Paul's talking about will be a lot like Jesus' glorified body. He had hands and feet. He could be seen by the disciples and he even ate with them after his resurrection. And yet in Luke 24, Jesus just appeared to them from out of nowhere. He just appeared to them and yet they perceived him as a physical being. But at the same time, they thought, we think we've seen a ghost. We understand from these post resurrection stories and encounters with Jesus that he was real and present and yet different. And the ch chip, the author goes on and he says, we will be too. We will be different. We will be us, but we will be different. Isaiah 65, 17 says this, see, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered nor will they even come to mind. As humanity fell into sin, the earth also fell. Ever since, Paul tells us that creation has been groaning, awaiting the restoration of God to make all things new. Our Christian hope is that God will remove sin and death from us and from the earth and that he will establish his kingdom in the new heaven, the new earth where all will be as he originally designed it to be, like the Garden of Eden, and that he will fulfill his promise by doing so. 
And the second thing that uh, Chip says is part of this uh, heavenly existence or this, this what heaven will look like, the new heaven will look like, is that the new heaven and the new earth will be a lot like the first earth. He said, sin tainted the earth. Our abuses of the earth have wreaked havoc with God's creation. The new earth is the same earth that God created, but God will restore it. He will restore it to its original uh, newness of life as he first created it to be. The curse of sin will be removed and God will restore harmony on the earth. Chip explains it this way. He says, just think about your salvation. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Paul says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new is come. Like the old me, he says, passed away, so the old earth will pass away. The old chip passed away when I came to Christ. But there's a lot about the new chip that looks strikingly similar to the old chip. What I, when I became a Christian, I still looked the same. My basic personality stayed the same, and I was still Chip Ingram. Similarly, the new earth will be new, better, different, but with continuity from the old earth. You see, the restoration of the earth in Revelation 21 and 22 look a great deal like the Garden of Eden from Genesis. There's continuity and fulfillment in God's shalom. And that what that word means is wholeness. It means peace, yes, but it means wholeness as God designed it. It means healing of that which has been broken by sin. It means that uh, there is life breathed back into God's original design. Revelation paints a beautiful picture of the new earth with rivers and trees and food and animals, absolute harmony and beauty. The light of the earth comes from God himself who is present there with us. And while it's new, it will be oh so familiar because it will be what we have been waiting for. It's going to feel like home because it is home. It's what we've longed for and been waiting for since we came into this world as little babies looking for what we call home. And that will be when we get to be reunited with God and all things are brought into harmony and into healing the way that God intended for it to originally be. Amen and amen. Now we're getting close to the end of our study on heaven. We've got about three more in a, with a wrap up. And so um, keep looking up those passages of scripture. Keep looking up uh, the new heaven and the earth, new earth. Uh, and let's, let's have some conversations after all of this is done because I want to hear some of your thoughts because, you know, some of the conversations that we've been having um, as that I've been talking to people kind of on the side about this study, some of it's sparked some real interest and some real ideas in uh, many of you about what you're thinking and what your thoughts are about what Chip is saying. I don't always 100% agree with every single thing, but you know, I don't know enough to really disagree either. And so it's like, I really want to dig in deeper and know more. So I really look forward to hearing what your all's thoughts are as we continue on this study and this journey and then wrap it up in a couple weeks. Amen. If there's anybody here this morning who would like to make a confession of faith or if you'd like to join this fellowship of believers, we invite you to do that as together we stand, y'all can come forward as we stand and sing our hymn of invitation. <clears throat>
together of worship and study. We pray, Lord, as we go from this place, you help us to carry you in our hearts and let that joy overflow to all that we meet this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.